What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. This is Wealth Hacker Labs, the channel dedicated to teaching you new ways to grow wealth that is not taught to you in schools or by your parents. I am your gracious host, Jeff Rose, and welcome to another Glassboard edition. So what we are talking about today is I want to share with you eight different ways, eight different strategies that you can make $1,000 a month extra on the side. And the cool thing about a lot of the ways I'm getting ready to show you is that once you figure them out and once you are able to master the systems and processes of what it takes to actually pull these off, that these can become passive, where you're not doing a lot of work and you're still getting paid. And if you're new to the channel, like this is something that I am very passionate about because I'm all about working hard right now, putting the work in, outsourcing, delegating, building the team so that you don't have to work actively to get paid. You can actually create something today and get paid for it next week, next month, next year, three years from now, five years from now, if you do it right. Another thing I wanna do in this video is that with each strategy that I share with you, I want to give you a real life example of somebody that is doing it. And these examples, these aren't people that are just making an extra $1,000 a month on the side. These are people that are making an extra 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, in some cases, a hundred thousand dollars a month because of the ideas that they have implemented and have mastered. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first one is Facebook ads. So what does that mean exactly? So if you don't realize this, when you're on Facebook, Facebook likes to serve ads to you. That's how they make money. They're a publicly traded company. They got to make money somehow. And one of the ways they do that is through advertising. But there are several thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of businesses that want to be on Facebook. They want to do Facebook ads, but they just don't know how. And I'm a perfect example here. I've had digital courses. I've had things I wanted to promote. And I knew that Facebook was a platform that I should be utilizing, but I didn't really have the time or energy or desire to really want to learn or master it because I had too many other things going on. But if you are trying to figure out what your thing is, uh, you're trying to figure out like what you can tap into, Facebook ads is a huge one that many business owners, small business owners, large business owners are willing to pay if you know what you are doing. And I've already featured a few of these on the channel, but we've got uh, Mike and Bobby from Laptop Empires. And this is, this is what they initially started. So Mike, like his, his story was he wanted to learn Facebook ads and he learned them. And then all of a sudden people were hiring him to, to do it for them. And uh, Mike and Bobby came together. They created a course called the Facebook Side Hustle, which shows you how to do Facebook ads, but also shows you how to reach out to business owners that are interested in paying somebody to do this. And because of this, I mean, Bobby had his digital agency that was making over six figures doing that. And then they have the course was also is selling like gangbusters because people want to know this information because it is a very, very hot topic right now. Uh, another example on the Facebook ads is Monica. And I'm going to probably misspell her last name, but I think it's Louis. And uh, her story was similar. She recognized like there was a market for bloggers that didn't want to, like me, didn't want to learn Facebook ads. So she just dove in and made herself learn it. You know, she tested it herself, she experimented. I mean, she basically just did what wealth hackers do. You go in, you experiment, and you just learn as you go. And from there, she has created a monster business because she has learned Facebook ads. Now she's hired out a team, uh, she's got people underneath her, so she's not doing all the grunt work right now but this is an easy thing that you can make an extra $1,000 a month on. So the second thing that you can do is writing. Otherwise known as freelance writing. So believe it or not, there are sites all over in different niches. There are dozens if not hundreds of sites in the personal finance niche. There are sites in the automotive niche, in the health niche, in the fitness niche, in the beauty niche, and they're looking for 
those that can produce content, if you can write content. And we're not talking like rocket science. You don't have to be an award-winning author. You don't have to be on the New York Times bestseller. As long as you can write and do so in a fast pace and do so without too many grammar mistakes and uh, run on sentences, like there are people that are willing to pay top dollar because they just want to be able to go somebody that they know that they can trust and they can get it done. And I'm not featured to her on the channel yet, but uh, one of the writers that works for my site, her name's Holly Johnson. You can check her out at clubthrifty.com. She also has her course, Earn More Writing. And Holly openly, sh openly shares how, I mean, she makes six figures, well above six figures writing, just writing. Uh, and she has built a name for that. And I mean, she is an amazing writer. Uh, once again, her name is Holly Johnson. You can check her out. But she has, you can check out her course if you're interested, if you think that that's something that you could pursue. In addition to writing, probably one of the hardest things to do is to actually find the clients, you know, finding people that are willing to pay. But there are, are services like you could start off on Fiverr, you know, just marketing your services. And you could look on, on Upwork.com, you know, market yourself as a freelance writer and you can publish some of your stuff so that people can see your writing style and see what you're all about. But you can make anywhere from $500 for uh, like a 750 word post. I know people that will pay three, a thousand dollars, you know, up to like 1500 words, sometimes less, depending if you have a, uh, like a specific trade or a, um, uh, your experience, in like a certain niche. So say for example, like you're really into day trading or Forex trading, or you have some sort of um, designation, like you're a CPA, or you've just got some very specific knowledge that most people don't have. Like if you get partnered with the right site, the right content producer, they're willing to pay top dollar for that expertise. So you can easily make $1,000 a month or more on the side. All right, the third thing that you can do to make $1,000 a month on the side extra is to start or create an online store. So we're not talking like Amazon, we're talking about Walmart. You know, we're thinking more like Etsy or we're thinking about Shopify or creating your own store. And one example to, to give to this, to just kind of give you like some context, his name is Steve Chu. And he has a blog, also a podcast called mywifequitterjob.com, which is an amazing story. You also can check out his video on my channel where he tells more about his story and, and how he was able to make $100,000 a year in the first year that he started his first online store. And the store that he started is called Bumblebee Linens. And what he sells is wedding handkerchiefs or something. Um, to be honest, I don't quite get it. You know, people actually pay for like these embroidered handkerchiefs or something. I, I don't know. But all I know is that he makes a lot of money selling handkerchiefs online through his online store. And that has been predominantly all through uh, organic search or through um, his local outreach, you know, his, his own social media outreach. Uh, some paid ads, but you know, there's, there's nothing uh, there that he's like gamed the system and that he's had the store for as long as I can know or as long as I've known him. So I'm gonna say like eight, nine, maybe 10 years. So Bumblebee Linens is very successful. He also has a course where he shows you if you have interest in starting an online store and what it takes. But I think what's really powerful with him is that he really hasn't leveraged Amazon at all. Like he, it all goes through him, which is pretty amazing because you know Amazon is shutting down all of the mom and pop retail stores and even uh, online stores, but he has still remained very competitive uh, through his online stores. So for, in your own case, maybe you don't wanna do handkerchiefs. I get it, uh, <laughs> I get it. So what else could you sell? I mean, that could be t-shirts, it could be survival knives, it could be camping gear. Uh, if you go on Etsy, you know, recently I just ordered some custom golf club covers uh, for the, my new golf clubs. I mean, th there, you can go so many different ways on things that you can create. You have a knack for it. Now, the cool thing is like, maybe you're not even good at creating it. Like you might be able to find somebody, like a vendor that actually can create the stuff for you so that all you have to do is set up the store store and find people to come to the store and make that purchase. And that's when you start building that up 
Uh, and that's where it can become passive because you've got people taking care of all that stuff for you. All right, another one that I am very, very excited about, one that I can personally attest to, another way to make $1,000 a month or more is through affiliate marketing. Now there are, affiliate marketing has so many different connotations depending on who you talk to and how they do it. Uh, one way of, of affiliate marketing is you are recommending other people's courses or products. Uh, another way of affiliate marketing is recommending a very specific uh, vendor or a company or a service. Now, one person who has crushed it, uh, I featured her on the channel, this is about almost two years ago now, but her name is Michelle. And you can check her out at Making Sense of Sense. That is her site or her blog. And she has an amazing story because she is making well over six figures per month. That is correct. I'll go ahead and write that down in case you uh, didn't hear that. She's making well over 100K plus per month through her site, through affiliate marketing. So with her, yes, she does have a course uh, that she promotes, but for her, it was recommending services like hosting companies or recommending a different type of investment products. On my blog, on Good Financial Sense, you know, we recommend a lot of different insurance products, uh, life insurance, car insurance, homeowners insurance. Like that's another way that you can make affiliates or you can recommend other people's products. So you can become an affiliate of Michelle. You know, she has her course which is making sense of affiliate marketing or something like that, making sense of affiliates. So if you recommend her course, which I think it sells for about $200, you get 50% of any sale that you generate. So just by recommending other products or services that you already, hopefully already use, uh, that you have received value out of and you feel very safe uh, and feel comfortable recommending that to somebody else, then you could make an affiliate. And I, I say that because you don't want to sign up to be an affiliate of a product or service that you don't like, that you don't use. And maybe you don't use it, but you still have a lot of trust, you know, for that company or for the person who created that that product that's that's being offered. So if you don't use it, but I would definitely be transparent in the fact that you don't haven't used it yet, that you would use it if you needed it. But this is another way that you can make an extra thousand dollars a month. As I mentioned, Michelle is making well over a hundred thousand dollars a month. She is on the extreme side of things. You know, we're doing north of that on our site, but it is a very lucrative thing if you are interested in putting in the work, the time to build up the platform that allows you to sit back and collect those affiliates. One thing I didn't mention about Michelle is that over for the last few years, she has been on the road traveling. So for over a year, she was in an RV traveling the country with her husband, making $100,000 a month. And for the last, I think a year now, she's been on the ocean on a sailboat. Correct. I don't think you get very good reception or Wi-Fi when you're out on the ocean, but she has been on the ocean with her husband making over $100,000 a month from affiliate marketing. Uh, that that's, that's how you do it. Like, do it how Michelle's doing it. Do it on a sailboat. All right, the fifth way that you can make money on the side, make that extra $1,000 a month is through self-publishing. So here, what we're talking about is through Amazon, Amazon Kindle, or just publishing directly through Amazon. As a published author, self-publishing was, it used to be thought of as like, you only do that because no publisher is willing to is willing to pay for your book idea. So generally speaking, you don't really have a good book idea that any book publisher thinks that you can actually make money on. But obviously Amazon has changed the game on that. So you have people that are publishing books, like their own books, and are creating a massive following, all strictly on Amazon, and they're sitting back and making more than they would ever make if they went through a publisher. Now, the, somebody always asks me, I get people asking me all the time, like, how much do you make from your book? And this is a book that I published several years ago, and I got a, a decent advance. It was like a five-figure advance. But after that, like, my royalty checks are pretty well next, next to nothing. We're talking like a couple hundred bucks a quarter. 
Now, I don't actually pr actually promote that book all that much, so that's part of the reason, but people that are publishing on Amazon, like once you have a hit, and it might not be the first one, but people keep publishing other books that are similar you know, in their, their uh, I guess, whatever space that they're in. And one example that comes to mind, his name is Mike Piper, and I met him through the personal blogging space. He may still have a personal finance blog, but he has a series of books on like simple investing and simple guides on taxes and very, very simplistic books. I mean, they're, they're nothing fancy, uh, but they've got good quality information. He puts a lot of time and research into them, but he now lives a very nice lifestyle where he's making north of six figures and just works when it needs to work. And it really all isn't all that much. And it really just depends on how much work that you want to put into it. But in his case, like he's built up a nice system to where he just sits back and publishes a new book. I don't know how often, I'm gonna guess like once every, once every six months. And another guy you can uh, check out too, his name is Chandler Bolt. And he has really mastered the self-publishing game. And I know he also has a course and a lot of training, a lot of good free material as well if you have interest in the self-publishing niche. And it's something that I'm definitely considering having some books on Amazon self-published self just to build up thought leadership, build up my network, and obviously keep more money because I don't have to give everything to the, the big time publishers. All right, the next one on the list, number six, this is one, I mean, th this is what I do, this is what I love. Number six is blogging. Now, if you haven't heard me say this before, then I guess you haven't been on the channel that much, but blogging is something that I just stumbled stumbled into. I started my blog, goodfinancialsense.com. That was initially as a marketing tool for my financial planning practice. Didn't know that you could make money on the side. Didn't know you could make money on a website or a blog. And it took me nine months to where I finally made my first Google AdSense payout. That was not a thousand dollars. That was $152 and some change. But after a while, I started making a couple hundred dollars a month and 500. Then I reached that a thousand dollars a month. You know, now the blog brings in anywhere between two to 300,000 a month, which is mind blowing to me, but it is, it, it's what I do. It's, uh, it's what I enjoy. Now with blogging, it can, a lot of different components of how you make money through that. You know, affiliate marketing is one of those. That it's really how we make the most of our money on the site. Um, there's also display ads, which are, could be like Google ads basically. We also work with other networks. Um, there's also uh, like text ads where people are CPC ads, you know, cost per click basically. So with that, people actually have to come to the site and click on something. If they click on it, then you get paid. Uh, and then we do a lot of on the affiliates as well on the blogging side. But it is something where I, I love it because yes, I put a lot of time and energy growing this, growing the blog, but now, because of the what I've built, uh, there isn't a lot of maintenance or upkeep. Uh, we still have to take care of the SEO, and you know we do have a web de web developer that takes care of all that stuff. And but like that's not me. Like that's somebody on my team that's able to do all that all that stuff. But blogging is something that you can be in any niche. You could be in the personal finance space. You can be in the, uh, I'm trying to think of some fun examples, in the food space, uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, you could be in the dog walking space, dog training space. I mean, there's so many different spaces that you can be in and there is a community around that and there's a way to make money of that blog. If you wanna check out a, a free challenge, you can go to the make one K challenge.com and I'll have a link in the description as well. But that is a free challenge. You can sign up, free email series that will show you some steps to get you to that making that first $1,000 a month. So be sure to check that out. All right, the other one, now you gotta have some nerves for this one. Uh, this is one that I have participated in. Uh, this is one that you really can't outsource and that is speaking. So if you enjoy getting on stages, if you enjoy speaking in front of people and offering motivational, inspirational type stuff, or if you can actually just deliver uh, just some 
I guess, subject matter expertise in whatever space that you might be in. It could be in uh, business leadership, it could be in teaching, it could be in the healthcare space, but you can get paid good money for speaking. Now, initially, you're, you might not make anything at all. You have to start to kind of get your name out there. You also want some experience uh, so that you're comfortable doing it, but it, it you can get paid anywhere from $500 on up to 5K, depending on how much experience that you have. I have a friend of mine who's been speaking for a long time. He has built, built his name around his brand and his ability to deliver, and he is now making uh, anywhere from 15 to 25,000. Thousand twenty five thousand per talk. So he's on the stage for forty five minutes or so and making anywhere from fifteen to twenty five thousand dollars per talk. Now that has taken a while to get to that point. Somebody you should check out if this is something that you're interested in. He's actually a really good friend of mine. His name is Grant Baldwin. He has a podcast and a site called The Speaker Lab. Grant was a was a professional speaker. Now he has courses and training for those that are interested in how to get booked and paid to speak. But I know, I don't know how much Grant was making, but I know he was commanding a pretty good fee by the time he ended up getting out of it. You know, for him, he's got three young girls, so he wanted to stay more home, didn't want to travel. That does require some travel, no, a lot of travel, depending on, you know, where you live and where the speaking engagements are, but you go where you get paid. But, you know, if you're getting paid, I have another friend who, has just started speaking here more recently. And I think the largest fee that he has received so far was $2,500. And that also included travel. And I think he had to travel to the West Coast. Either, you know, he lives here uh, in the uh, Southeast. Either way, he got paid $2,500 with plus travel to go speak. I think it was a two day event. So he had to give two talks, but two days got paid $2,500 and was on the stage for 60 minutes tops each time. So two hours on top of travel, like that's not a bad gig. So speaking is another way that you could make an extra thousand dollars a month or more on the side. And the last one, and this is the one, I, I really enjoy this one. It's one that is, uh, it still blows my mind that you can make money doing this. Uh, you can also lose a lot of money doing this and you'll see what I mean. Uh, shoes. In more particular, like flipping shoes. And so this past year, I have <laughs> I've became a sneakerhead uh, in my 40s, and I have more Jordan ones. I have Jordan ones and Adidas Ultra Boost are like my my go tos. But what I've realized and I've learned through this process is that you can make money flipping shoes. Whether you are buying new releases and you can do this from the convenience of your phone using sites like StockX or, um, or I guess you have to buy them first on the Nike sneaker app or the Adidas app. You can also buy them through other online retailer apps like Finish Line, Foot Locker, Foot Action, Champs. And there is new releases coming out all the time. Now, all of them always will make money or there'll be shoes that are going to sell out, but you can use sites like StockX, which sounds like a stock market site, but it's really a, it's one of the coolest sites ever. It's basically showing like the, uh, the supply and demand of shoes, whether there be new releases coming out or shoes that were released five years ago, three years ago, but that's where I bought my first pair of Jordan 4s that I used to have when I was a kid. I didn't know you could actually go out and buy old shoes and I found them on StockX, paid about $400, but boom, I've got them. Since then, StockX has got a lot of my money, but I've also been able to go on Nike sneaker app and just when I, a new release is coming out, I just put a entry in and sometimes I get selected, sometimes I don't, I feel like more times than not. But the ones that I have, God, I've made anywhere, the lowest is gonna be $25, $50. I think the highest so far is about 200, but there are some shoes that had I got them that I could have made anywhere from 500 to $1,000 for one pair of shoes. 
Now those don't happen every single month, but I'm telling you they happen all the time. And whether you wanna do that on your phone or you could actually go to like a Foot Locker or a Champs if you have a mall or a store next close to you, go there and put your name in or wait in line. And sometimes you wait in line for an hour, it might be worth an extra 500 to a thousand dollars. And not sure what you do for work right now or how you get paid, but that could be a very easy way to make an extra $1,000 a month on the side. So what I wanted, the whole point of doing this was just to show you that one, there are so many different ways that you can make money on the side and also just to give you some real life examples of people that are doing it, that have done it, that are currently doing, doing it. And the best part is, is that they're not making $1,000 a month. None of these people I've mentioned are making $1,000 a month from this, the, this, the, the ideas here. What they're making is so much more than that. But for many of you, like just the idea or concept of making an extra $1,000 a month is almost impossible to even ascertain. And I just wanna show you that not only can you do it, but people are doing it and they're making so much more than $1,000 a month, but you have to have the willingness to try. You have to have the willingness to put yourself out there and learn and experiment and see which one's going to work for you. Do you wanna do all of these? No, you just wanna pick one or two and pick the ones that you think that you're going to flourish on, that you're going to enjoy, enjoy the process, because you gotta cut your teeth, you gotta get dirty, you gotta roll up your sleeves and put in the work and figure it out. But once you do, you can sit back and enjoy it, enjoy it. I'm, I know Michelle is enjoy it making six figures a month while she's on a sailboat. I'm enjoying making six figures a month doing YouTube videos and hanging out with my kids. Like, that's what I enjoy doing, but it all starts with that first goal of a making. That first goal of making $1,000 a month on the side. So the question is, are you willing to do it? Let me know in the comments below. This is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome.